Hey, Spencer. Nice Hi. to see you. This is about as, uh, <laughs> as good as it gets in terms of you traveling to Sweden to see your own. Yeah, show. unfortunately, um, not happening, I don't think. I, I, rem I was thinking back to, you know, when we first talked and it was, I remember that we, you know, my first inclination was, oh, Nordenhaka, I think I'll do, you know, I should do something, you know, minimalist, something that like, you know, that's their sort of bread and butter. So I should like do a minimalist redo. And I think immediately you're like, please don't do that. <laughs> um, but then we sort of both landed on, I think the really the first artist that uh, we landed on that agreed upon was Dash and Dash. Mm. And um, it feels to me like that was sort of her work and one work in particular, uh, a, a kind of work that she was making was started off, kind of kicked off an entire thought process for me for the rest of the show. The last couple of years, she sort of started to incorporate objects into her, um, I don't call them paintings really, but they're, I, mean, I guess they're technically paintings, but into her sort of multi-panel works. Um, and, and it started with rocks that she had found, which I really loved. And then when I was in her studio last summer, she had started using, um, old Evian, not old, they look pretty new, these Evian bottles. Um, mm -hmm. And they have this sort of really magical uh, power and energy about them. And they just didn't leave my head. And then when, when you talked about, you said, well, I think we should have Dash and I, I totally agreed. And obviously we had talked about her work in the past. That work and those works in particular um, came to me first. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh, I really, those water bottles, I really can't stop thinking about those. And then, from there, I started thinking about, you know, my act of looking and looking at ready-mades and objects. And um, as I mentioned in the press release, I, I kind of am always sort of taking pictures of the ways in which, you know, sculptures are made on the street in New York mm -hmm. by, you know, by energy, by wind, by people, by however, and how things sort of gestures happen, um, either intentionally or not. And um, so I'm, that's just a, a daily practice that I that I do uh, with my iPhone. And so then from there, I was like, oh, so I, I think I want to make a show around this sort of trying to translate this sort of active looking that I have. Mm -hmm. um, and naturally, I sort of, uh, you know, I'm not a curator, but so I, 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 I immediately went towards artists I already know and like and have supported. Um, so, um, you know, I, I think in the first room, we obviously we have Dash, but next to that we have um, um, John Devola, who I think uh, if I were ever to curate a show ever again, or anytime I'll curate any show, he'll be in it. <laughs> I just think he's, you know, a really, really important artist and, and totally overlooked. And I think yeah, he's he a great discovery for really, really. And that vandalism series is really, really special. Um, that those kind of mark makings, it just fit perfectly in the show. Um, and it just made total sense. And then Virginia is not someone I've supported, but I've really, really liked her work. And she's always been sort of this masterful. Um, she's the master at installation and taking objects or other sort of, you know, she basically will show up to her shows with a bunch of materials and sort of make it on site usually. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are things sculptures already made, but then the other things she just sort of makes when she gets there. And I, I just think it's such a, it's such a beautiful thing. It's also something that Michael E. Smith does, um, who's in the other room, whose works I always find to be, you know, have these sort of otherworldly magical uh, presence in this really simple, profound way. Mm. Um, it's a really strange kind of uncanny work with this, with these oats on a megaphone and uh, yeah. Seems to be and he's another artist that sort of you know he, he he travels with a bunch of materials he's collected. Uh, he lives in you know uh, Providence, Rhode Island, and I think he just has a studio filled of you know I, I wouldn't dare call it junk because it becomes art, mm -hmm. but um, you know he shows up and you go to see him installing and I'll have one room just filled with stuff mm. that he may or may not use. And um, uh, his installations are really fascinating because he uses the lights, he manipulates the lighting. He will, I've seen ones where he is, you know, used the, the, uh, the gallery reception desk and removed all of the books and doing simple things like that. Mm. 
to transform spaces, which I think is really, really interesting and very usually very poetic. Um, oh, in the front one, we also have Ingve, right? So he's another kind of an unusual work from Ingve, from what I know of him. I mean, I can see totally how it links in with his with his themes and these yeah because usually he's more of like a dissector right i mean he mm -hmm. kind of takes found materials and <clears throat> this is more of a more of a simple replication than it is um uh than it is a gesture that he usually makes which is um a little bit more severe i felt like it had a playfulness about it that mm -hmm. that that maybe was missing in the show ingvi's work is extremely i mean it's uncanny and enigmatic it has, it's a real strange there's something about the scale and the density of the information in that yeah. small uh, amount of heavy material floating on the wall which is yeah uh, strong. And he again is sort of a master at installation and um he'll take sort of very simple things and you know take car headlights and turn them into figures or you know aliens you know mm. he's done a lot of really interesting things with uh the ready-made that mm. um that i i kind of keep going back to and green kelly is another artist i've supported and really loved for a long time and i actually saw the work that's in the show i saw the couch that it came from in her studio. It's like a little mm. pink polka dot mm. children's couch. <laughs> and then she hadn't done anything to it yet. I was in her studio probably, I don't know, I, I can't remember months anymore, um, but it was sometime last summer, I think. And she hadn't done anything to it yet. And um, it was just such a surprise because obviously I'd asked her to be in the show and she said yes. And I, I had no idea what she was making. Um, and I, I just was hoping for the best. And I think we got a really, really incredible work yeah. with sort of excavated pillow where she's incorporated these tin cans that she's always made um, either separately or in other works in her practice. And um, the hand with cigarette, she kind of feels is sort of a, a self portrait, which is kind of a new thing. Um, mm -hmm a new sort of nod that she's done in her practice. Mm. Um, a lot of really interesting things going on with her process, her obsessions, um, and the way that she sort of tinkers with things. You know, I think she doesn't really know exactly what the final process is, but she really, I think this work really felt like it, she had a lot, it was made with a lot of joy. And she even said that. She was like, I really had fun making this work, which mm. is for me was, really nice to hear because I, I, I never want to ask an artist to be in a show and that process to be painful. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that whole room, all the artists in that room have this archaeological quality with mm -hmm. Etheridge also, uh, it's kind of scraps from his. Yeah, and, and for Roe, I mean, I felt like that work was sort of like a, this sort of a map to his brain in a way um, because it's sort of like, it's a clip art, so it's almost like his, a, like a um, an imagination of his desktop mm. um, with, you can see in it, if you're familiar with his work, uh, maybe outtakes of other images that he's used, outtakes of editorial shoots he's done, maybe clips of objects that he's thinking about. Um, you know, I think he, I don't know if he still smokes, but the American spirit thing was not really intentional. Like I, I wasn't, picking that thinking this show is Americans um, or about America at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like in the end, it ended up being kind of poignant. Yeah. Um, the, the pick and clips are, are something that he continues to do in his practice. But I think it's an interesting kind of look at his uh, sort of dissection of the way he thinks in his actual practice. Mm. Oh, Jill's, Jill's been, a, um, <clears throat> I, I think this work in particular you know, her work is generally um, about dissecting systems of power mm. uh, or inserting herself into systems of power and how to renegotiate those um, those anomalies. And uh, the Baragon project is, I can't even explain because it, it, it takes a long time. It's very intricate and there's many layers to it, but I felt like this one work was a really nice way of just a simple gesture of showing illuminating both sides of one page, mm. uh, which is just kind of something that she's always sort of looking beneath the surface. 
Mm. Um, but the way that the light box operates and the way that the image reveals itself uh, behind the other, I felt was a really beautiful. And then um, Cayetano is in the same room. So again, yeah, I mean, Cayetano too. I mean, more. A, he's a, re a crazy smart, intelligent person. Um, but, you know, also looking at sort of creating, they're almost, I almost look at them as like future relics. I mean, they're, they're mm. replications of old, objects but they're they're somehow not in the past i don't know they're timeless mm -hmm. in this way that i find really interesting the way he sort of negotiates history um and the implications of you know um the you know the way that he added the resin to fill in the the, the sort of negative space yeah. such an interesting gesture um, it's resin but it's also uh, or it's wax mixed with like real plastic trash, like yeah. plastic bags, which are so pollutant it, and so much part of our discussion. And then connecting with Dash's work, which, yeah. which so nicely connects such a ubiquitous throwaway object, this Evian bottle, in a kind of strange co-sympathetic relationship to such organic materials like the adobe and this, this right. very alive surface. Right. Uh, the, so those know, two kind of- uh, Earthy materials versus synthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yet and yet it becomes uh, a sympathetic work. It's not, yeah. it's not fighting itself. In, in no, the, no, it seems natural, but yeah. it also, it, you know, it, is, it, is it from the past or the future? You know, it's like this, yeah. this sort of like interesting, um, you know, push and pull, which I, I, it's a sort of a tension that he always is able to achieve in his work. Naoki, yeah. Yeah, He's no, he, he, um, uh, he was a new discovery for me as well. And interestingly enough, I was th talking about balance. And I felt like I wanted to have someone that, whose work was a little bit more um, meticulous and not so much about you know, um, uh, uh, gestures to found objects, but maybe something that was, compl you know, mostly um, uh, created from his brain rather than something that he found, someone found. He offered to make a new work for the show, which is the landscape, which I felt was really interesting because he actually used, you know, polished p pieces of wood, mm. whereas all the other materials kind of feel a lot more synthetic. So I thought this sort of balance of landscapes were really mm. weird interesting mm -hmm. um and i just think he's the way he thinks about um his work and in, in art making is very very interesting and from his you know he lives in la but i think he's had a very kind of varied visual experience culturally you know growing up in paris and born in tokyo and i think now living in la there's a lot of different sort of mm -hmm. things forming his visual experience mm -hmm. in the in the same room um there are these super beautiful the most analog messaging service that exists by uh, uh fiona connor yeah the work is like i almost feel like those are paintings too in a way i i look at them and i think of like agnes martin or any other sort of beautiful minimalist painting or sculpture um such a nice gesture to you know taking mess message boards from cal arts and casting them and just looking at sort of just the the marks the mark making and the, the, the things that are left behind and i'm always like the presence of absence is sort of like you know obviously something that is what i'm looking at when i'm looking at you know garbage on the street who left it there what is there a narrative um, and this is sort of that same kind of thing. There's a lot of presence in that absence. That, that's uh, when Klaus Nordenhaki had an exhibition with Miroslav Balka in Stockholm many years ago, and it was the same year that Octavio Paz won the Nobel Prize. And he came into the gallery and looking at Balka's work, he said, mm, uh -huh. presence of absence. <laughs> Right. Nice. I'm not yeah. even quoting him. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> also in the room is Robbie Jackson, who is an, also a new discovery for me and actually someone that I connected with um, <clears throat> during the, the pandemic. I'd seen his work a while ago in Los Angeles and was very intrigued. I think he's um, engaging with a, a new sort of queer dialogue and, and ideas of queer masculinity that I think are really interesting. Mm. I like how he sort of takes this idea of a, or the form of an altarpiece 
and sort of applies um, the collage element, which is um, the, uh, Kurt Russell's eye from, uh, uh, you know, a picture of Kurt Russell's eye from uh, Escape, Escape from New York, which is a movie from the 90s, which I felt, you know, was a, it's a dystopian movie about, you know, Manhattan becoming, a, a, the whole island becoming a prison, basically. I was like, hmm, this is how my life feels right now. <laughs> well, and that, that piece has such a fun, I mean, it's quite funny, the Robert Jackson, and then there's this weird doorstop, door piece. Doorstop, and then the, the sort of, yeah, the, the, the use of the screws yeah. in that put the collage element are the same as the screws that use the hinge. I mean, I think there's mm -hmm. some detailing there that's very subtle and very mm -hmm. elegant mm -hmm. on a you know, a, a surface and presentation that's quite raw. Mm. Uh, um, so I, I just think there's an interesting balance there of sort of raw material and ele elegant sort of painterly gestures. Mm. Last in the room is uh, Mitchell Cahey, who um, is a painter I've known here in New York for a while. And I felt like not only is his use of medium really interesting, and it's hard to tell virtually, but I know you've seen them in person. They have very interesting surfaces where he's sort of- Yeah, I think it's just like it's made out of- uh, Yeah, there's these velvety surfaces next to very shiny high gloss yeah. surfaces. And the, the forms themselves are, they have an energy about them that feel like they're sort of transitory. Yeah, um, yeah. And they're also, they're very much sort of like a, you know, biological abstraction. So, so I really like the idea good. of including something that was like more on a um, microscopic level rather than a, yeah. you know, macro level. You can imagine that one association with his paintings here in Sweden is Hilma of Klimt. Oh, absolutely. No, I, we're so happy for this exhibition. I mean, it's super dynamic and with all these you know, it's tweaking and pulling and pushing in different points, but there's a very nice uh, totality to it, which feels like an argument for something or a, a hypothesis or something like that. And yeah, uh, I mean, I'm thinking also of sort of cadence, right, for your eyes. And, yeah. you know, the, you know, if you're looking up or you're looking down or give your eyes a break, you know, and I, I think it turned out really well. I was really nervous when I was doing the final count of how many works there were. I was like, oh, this is going to be crammed. Um, I really don't. I'm sort of a less more. It really turned out well. Yeah. Um, so I'm really happy and I think it, it was a really fun, fun exercise and something to, you know, give me a little bit of joy during kind of a dark time. So I really mm -hmm. thank you for asking me mm -hmm. to uh, participate. We feel the same way. Uh, well, thanks so much, Spencer. And thanks, uh, I appreciate this conversation as well. Yeah, I wish we could have done it in person, but yeah. Or we will soon. This, this uh, at least is for posterity. Yes, exactly. Good. All right. All take right. care. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.